What's good, everybody? What's going on? It's your boy Cal Griffin here, your host for Legends Talk. Um, you know, appreciate everybody, man, for you know showing support, showing love. Tonight we got a goodie, former NBA player. Um, you know, what I'm saying, ten year pro, NBA champion. We got Speedy Claxon tonight. My guy is prompt. About his business. Yo, what's up, champ? Yo, what's the word? I'm chilling, man. How you doing, man? How you doing? I'm good. Can't complain. Just got a little workout in, so. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I appreciate you, man, for taking the time out of your schedule, man, to, to, you know what I'm saying, to, to come kick it with me for a little bit. Um, I know I know time time is of the essence, so you know what I'm saying? We're going to jump right into it, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Uh, first and foremost, man, I'd like to um, shout out my sponsor for this for this um, platform, Soul Pack. I'm not sure if you heard of them yet or not, but um, Soul Pack is a, a bag company, and they got some terrific bags for, for the ballers out there. Oh, good. But, um, you know, with, with no further ado, man, how, how you doing, man? Um, you know what I'm saying? I hope everything is, is well with you and the fam. Yeah, everything's good. Uh, just trying to stay safe, make it through this pandemic like everybody else, man. Crazy, man. I know. I know it's crazy. I know though we'll get be be here right now, man. Nah, I know, I know. It's crazy. But um, you know what I'm saying? We we blessed, you know what I'm saying? We every everybody's um on my end is good. Everybody on your end I hope is is, is doing well as well. Yeah. Um but um, you know what I'm saying, Speedy Claxton, man, uh Hempstead, Hempstead, Long Island's finest. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot of people may know you from you know, from that from that area. Some people know you from, you know, from the Christ the King days. Yeah. Other people may know you from, from the Hofstra days. And, you know what I'm saying, the rest probably know you from, you know what I'm saying, from your time in the NBA. Um, yes. But, uh, you know, I just like the, you know, in terms of where it all started for you, um, when did you pick up the ball when you first started playing ball? And, and when did you actually realize that hey i may have something here i could i could go somewhere with this man i started at a young age i'm talking about like second third grade playing what they call uh tiny tots back in the days you know yeah i had yeah. an older sister named cheryl who was a cheerleader for our elementary school called saint gabe so she was kind of uh, my babysitter so i would have to go with her to her practice her right. cheerleading practices and, you know, there was a group of kids down on the other end playing basketball. So I asked her if I could go down there with them and play. And she said, sure. I didn't know that they was kind of like having practice or whatever. So I went down there and the coach let me play with them. And he, he thought I was pretty good. So he's like, yo, why don't you, why don't you play? And then I asked my sister. And she was like, cool. Um, <laughs> the same time that she would have chilling in practice anyway. So. Right. Kill two birds with one stone, huh? Yeah. Or that's what's up. And when did you actually like realize, like, yo, I'm pretty good here? You know what I'm saying? And, and <laughs> it, this could make this could maybe take me some places. Uh, I'm gonna say probably like around the seventh, eighth grade. Uh, I was better than most of the people that I was playing against. And I was like, you know what? I'm actually out right here. And then you know, <laughs> I, went to, I went to Christ the King, which is a, a basketball rich tradition high school. Right, and the rest is history after that. Nah, that's that's what's up. I mean, in terms of in terms of Christ the King, you know, anybody who's anybody in in the you know in the basketball world knows that um, Christ the King is a powerhouse. You it's a powerhouse. You, you said it right, man. You stole the words right out of my mouth. It's a powerhouse. Uh, yeah. When I was there at the time, we were ranked number two in the country. Uh, I was my teammates was Eric Barkley, who was a McDonald's All American, who ended up going to St. John's, getting drafted in the first round by Portland, mm. and then Lamar Odom was also my teammate, who was a McDonald's All American. He was all everything you know, played in the years and all that. So we had a we had a very talented team. Some will say the best high school team ever, and I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah, y'all, y'all won, y'all won. Actually, while you were there, y'all won, um, y'all won city, the, the city championship. Um, what what year was that for you? Yeah, we won the city championship in '95. 
Uh, then we lost actually in the States to Mr. Marbury. Um, he was he was a handful at the time. Hey right, man, hey, he, he's always been, he's always been a handful, man. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it, so they good. beat us. Him and five, him and Jamel Thomas, five thirty, beat us in the state championship. I mean, we ain't losing any bombs. Like they they were good. Like right, I said, right. they had Steph and Jamel who went to Providence, so we ain't losing bombs now. Yeah, yeah. Now you forgot, you forgot. You, you guys had Ira Miller too. I, you know what I'm saying? Nah, of course. Shout out to my man Bo Miller. He was tough. Uh, he was another, he went mid-major, he went to La Tech in, in the Knicks State. Uh, Kamal McQueen went to St. Peter's. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I not, no, no disrespect to those guys. They were good players as well, but I was just naming, you know, the NBA guys. Yeah, yeah, of course. The people, the, the, it's, the names. It's rare, you, it's rare that you have three NBA players um, on one high school team. On one team. On one high school team. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. But um, in terms of, in terms of um, like, college recruiting, um, like you just said, you got three NBA uh, – well, you, you guys were an NBA at the time, but you got three high-level high level prospects. Uh, when did the, the schools start, you know, showing interest in you and uh, what kind of schools were kind of knocking on your door? You know, going into my – after my junior year, I didn't play um, AU basketball. Um, I was a knucklehead and didn't do the right thing yes. in the classroom, so I had to go to summer school. So Right, sure. right. I didn't get to play AU basketball, so I, I didn't get seen um, on a national level. So a lot of local schools were, were recruiting, you know, Manhattan, Iona, and, like, the riders of the world. And then not until, like, midway through my senior year, and, I mean, in Hofstra, like, Stony Brook, but then not, like, until, like, midway, midway point of my senior year, a lot of big schools started coming after me, St. John's, Stephen mm -hmm. Hall. Georgia Tech, but um, I just wanted to stay with my – I want to honor my verbal commitment that I made to Coach Wright, who's now the Villanova head coach at the time, and stay with Hopshire. Right, right. Because they, yeah, they, they, they showed you they love. Um, but, yeah. Now, I mean, I know I know that uh, Coach Wright had actually, you know, doing my, you know, doing my research and whatnot, they showed up to every single game and, and showed you that much, that much love and loyalty. Yeah, I mean that's what that's ultimately what got me to go there was the kind of love that they showed. I'm talking about uh, the recruiting landscape is different now than it was back then. Whereas uh, it's pretty much only certain times where you go out now. Right. Back then you kind of go out a lot. You go to like the local tournament. So every lo every local tournament I played in, <laughs> somebody. Yeah. Was there. Right. It was like they was constantly in my face and they made me a priority. Nah, that's what's up. I mean that's and, and that's what, you know, a lot of people don't you know, don't take into consideration. Now a lot of youngsters they go for the big names and they and that's yeah. it. That's I mean that's not the that's not the right way to do things. If you're truly trying to make it to the NBA, you really gotta go to the to the right fit. Somebody who's gonna let you showcase your talent. And show what you could do. That's the only way to get to that next level. The name right. isn't gonna get you there. You gotta That's actually show what you can do. And nah, you be given the opportunity to do that. Absolutely. Let me ask you this though. Um, in terms of in terms of Hofstra, the the tradition. I mean, of course they have a they have they have their own rich rich tradition. But in terms of you know the the person outside looking in. Hofstra isn't isn't one of those um those those names that that's producing the NBA NBA players like a like a say Kentucky or one of those those programs. No, what but it was the it was the right fit. Right, right. Me. Um, I knew that I was going to be given the ball from day one, and I was going to be able, I was going to be allowed to play through some mistakes as a freshman. Right, and that's what I wanted, and that's what I needed, and I kind of wanted to to be the big fish in a small pond. Right. I got tired of living in Eric and Lamar's shadows. No, nah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Shout out to Jamel 530, man. We just yeah, I see him tapping. Just, I just shouted you out, five. Yeah, man. But um, in terms of um, now, now in terms of you think you having this dream, you know what I'm saying, of, of NBA. A lot, of, a lot of young kids have this dream, but it doesn't, you know what I'm saying, when when did it kind of resonate with you that yo, it's possible that I can go to the NBA? You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm not I'm gonna say not to my senior year. Um, 
it's like every game I played, it was like 20 NBA scouts uh, courtside. Mm -hmm. And then finally, when the season ended and I went to the Phoenix camp, Phoenix free draft camp. Back then, they had three camps. They had Portsmouth, which was like all this, where the seniors got invited to. Right. Then you played well there, you got invited to Phoenix, and then from Phoenix to Chicago. So I got I bypassed Portsmouth and went straight to Phoenix, where a lot of the second rounders uh, got invited to and showed out, and I killed it. Um, playing against some of the more high-profile point guards at the time, the Scooney Pens, the Ed Coders, uh, Mass and Tangela, those guys. And I killed that camp and went to Chicago and showed out again. And then right then and there, I was like, all right, I'm going to get drafted. I didn't know where, but I knew I was right. going to get drafted. Right, right. Now, we're we, we moving a little fast. We're moving a little fast, you know, in, in respect of your time. I know we, you know what I'm saying, we don't have a, a, a tremendous amount of time but in terms of you actually getting drafted, right? First round, 20th pick overall. What kind of emotions, what kind of emotions and, and what kind of feelings were you going through that day? And even as, as the commissioner, you know, um, says your name over, the, you know, over, that, uh, over that, that microphone and um, I mean, says what I was able to breathe a sigh of relief. Um, mm. I knew that all my hard work finally paid off and I was about to live out my dream. Um, every, anybody and everybody who played basketball have aspirations of making it to the NBA. Right. And not so many people <clears throat> can say, not so many people can make it from a mid-major. And I did. And I was just excited and I, I was able to share that uh, excitement I day with a lot of my family and my friends because I didn't attend the draft. I had a little draft party across the street um, at this little local bar. So a lot of my family and friends were there. Right. Oh, um, got to share that moment together. Nah, that's what's up, man. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I always wondered, like, what what the person is going through. What, what You know what I'm saying? When when that name is actually called. Man, listen, and... that's, that's, that's a day that you will never forget. Right, that's right, crazy. absolutely. Did you have a did you have a lot of cousins that that popped up out of nowhere <laughs> and all of that? <laughs> nah, you, yeah, you always gonna have that. I mean, I remember. No, that's a, it's, it's a room. One, one of my homegirls, man, we was tight in college. Uh, she actually just tapped in, Janine. There you go, Janine. I see you out there. Uh, but it was all love, man. Everybody was happy for me. I just, I was just excited to to make it. Right, right. But you know, that's that's always that's said that um, once you make it, you know, what I'm saying, um, and you come into you know whatever kind of success. That a lot of people just start coming out the woodwork. Did you did you get that? Like, yo, hey, cuzzo, what's up? <laughs> a little bit, but my parents did a, a great job of locking them. You know, they was the the Kembe right, right. of the game. <laughs> <laughs> they kept they kept everybody away from me. And, you nah, know, that's what's up. I, mean, I, I stayed. With, I, I stick with my A ones, man, from day one. Everybody know where. Everybody who was there for me from college days, they're still in my circle now. Right, right, right. Nah, that's that's what's up. You gotta that's that's the way you gotta keep it, man. Authentic. But um, in terms of in terms of uh, you got drafted by Philadelphia, and um, you actually got hurt your rookie your rookie year, and and you missed the entire season. Yeah. How, dev how devastating was that to be drafted, playing with Allen Iverson, yeah, one of your all time greats, and and to get hurt and miss the entire <laughs> I, season. I was, I was heartbroken, man. It happened in the first, very first preseason game. We was playing against Utah, and I got a steal. I ripped Stockton, actually, and I was going in for a layup, and I tried to Euro step Quincy Lewis, and I guess my knee kind of hit his knee, so then it hyperextended. I just thought, you know, it was a hyperextension. I was going to get up and be able to play again, you know, walk right, right. But – I kind of laid on the ground, and the doctors and everybody rushed the court. And I was like, well, there's like everybody, everybody was like, yo, just stay down, stay down, stay down. So I guess it looked worse than it actually felt. Right, right. So then the doctor did his ACL check, and then they carried me off the court in the back to the locker room. And at that point, in my mind, it felt like it was getting a little bit better. So I told yeah. him, like, this, nah, it's getting a little bit better. He's like, all right, we'll get up and walk. So I tried to get up and walk, and I collapsed. And I was like, oh, god damn, man. I was like, damn. 
He was like, yeah, he tore your ACL. I was like, this low. There goes my road. And that was my first major injury uh, of my life. Right now, I mean, were you thinking like, yo, that's my year or that's my, that's my, I'm done. My, that's my, my career or what? It, it like, was, it was just, it was so many thoughts going through my head at that time. Um, here I am on the edge of living out my dream. Right. <laughs> for this to happen, it's like, are you kidding me? Right, so I never right. Said I was going to be out for, for the whole year. So it was like, right. damn, like that's, that's whack, man. No, no, of course. <laughs> To, to be there in Philly and to, to be spot, to be a part of that special year that we had, it, it sucked even more because the team had a great year. Right, right. A year for the history books. Right. Now, now t tell me a little bit about, about AI, man. What kind, of, what kind of guy was he to play with? And um, did you pick up anything, you know what I'm saying, to, for, for, your, you know, for your career? Did you pick up on anything from him, you know what I'm saying? And, and what was that? Yo, AI is a, he was a great teammate, man. I mean, the media portrayed him so wrong. Um, he, he was a fun, loving guy. Like, he, he was caring for all his teammates. Um, he pushed you to be the best. Um, he, he was a dope person, man. He, he really taught me how to play every minute like it truly is the last. Right. Now... And after after that, um, after that Philly, that that Philly, um, you know that year, those years in Philly, um, you wind up getting, you wind up going to San Antonio, um, and you were a part of that that O three championship run. Even um, then, even then, I got I got hurt, man. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Playing well, it was, this was it was probably like mid November, and me and Tony Parker was probably we was pretty much split in the minutes at the point guard spot. Right. I was actually finishing a lot of the games. And then we was playing against Detroit, and I ripped Lindsey Hunter. It's every time I steal the ball, I get hurt. <laughs> I got to stop stealing the ball. Yeah, right, right. Lindsey Hunter, Hunter, I dove for the ball and dislocated my shoulder, tore mm. my labrum. So I had to get surgery. So I was out for four months. And then that's when Tony Parker uh, began being Tony Parker. He right, right. Home. He didn't have to look over his shoulder. He was just out there hooping. Nah, that, that's a fact, man. I, I came, mean, back, came back in late April, and then Pop slowly, slowly worked me back into rotation. So slow that uh, it was my contract year, so I knew I had to be out there competing. And right. this dude wasn't playing me. I was getting mad and being Right, upset. right. And then he, he actually put me in, in garbage time one game. And I went out there, but I was just out there just being out there. I wasn't trying to score, make plays. <laughs> I was just being out there. Right. He, he, he could tell, he could sense that I was frustrated. So right. he called me into the office after the game, and he was like, yo, don't, don't ever disrespect yourself or the game like that again. He said, this is your contract year. You don't know who's watching you. Right. You what kind of plans we have for you or anybody else. So whenever you're out there, Give it, your, give it your all, and he didn't have to say another word to me after that. Right, right, and and they actually um, decided not to pick up your your player option that 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 season. Um, but but just rewinding just a little bit, right? Yeah. And and I told I tell this to everybody, man, and 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 if anybody saw the the last couple of posts that I did, um, you saw that that championship run. And you, you saw what, you know, what you were producing out there. You know what I'm saying? What you were bringing to the table. You know what I'm saying? In terms yeah. of. Uh, this, I, um, I earned my chip. I yeah, you earned it. You earned it. And I, um, I, I can't front. It. Like, you you and um and, and Rayful yeah. Austin. Me and Tim Duncan. Me and Tim Duncan led that team. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you and Rayful Austin were two of the guys that. You know what I'm saying? That we're on the cusp of something on 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 good teams. Yeah. And the, and the teams. Nah, Skip showed out. Like too, a... Skip showed out too when they went to the championship. Right, right. They, they messed up because they tried to force Jameer in the game. And Yo. Skip, Skip was killing. They should have just let Skip that was, play. That was his squad for a second, like. And I felt the same way about you when when What's I up, saw man? you. When, when I saw you hooping. Yeah. And and I saw what you was doing out there. That remind that, that those two situations kind of resembled each other in my eyes. Now, but um, 
That's facts. That's a hundred. Right, because I felt like, you know what I'm saying? I felt like I felt like the team at least should have brought you back, first of all. You know what I'm well, saying? They, they, they tried to bring me back. Um but the money was even um in Golden State and Golden State was giving me an opportunity to start. So I was like, you know what, let me go there to try to set up my next contract. Right. Even right. Money was the same and San Antonio was a better organization. I was kinda of thinking long term and I and I thought that Golden State would give me a better opportunity to make more money on my next contract. Nah, as as they you know, as they did. As in, and in terms of um you you at Golden State, um actually you wound up, you know, working with them post post your career. Yes, yeah, scouting um, three years after I finished playing. Right, right. So them, and, uh, when they first championship or right, right, right. Who who's on that team? Who's on that team? Who you, um that you helped bring? You know, what I'm saying bring to the team. Uh, uh Steph, that was Clay, Draymond, yeah. Harrison Barnes, um, Festus Azeli, uh, yeah, Andrew Bogut. We we put together a nice team, man. Yeah, that was Mark. That was Mark. Some um, yeah, Mark's doing. That's what's up, man. I'm I'm um I'm rooting for Mark as well, man. I'm yeah, man. He he, got, he he needs to get another chance, man. He was right on the cusp yeah. of having a great coaching career. As you can see, this all that love that Steve Kerr is getting right now, that's only Mark Jackson love. <laughs> For real. This, that was his team. I know. He, I mean, you guys assembled that that squad, and um, for whatever reason, you know what I'm saying, there's a lot of conspiracies out there why he's not getting it. Or... Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you know what it is, man. Yeah. They, they, they said Mark is too opinionated and he wanted too much power and control, but I mean that's Mark. I mean he's he was he was a great player. He he wants control because he know what it is. Right. He been there. Yeah. You know what I'm he deserved that. He earned that. He earned right, it. Right. So hopefully he gets another chance. I hope so too, man. Because uh, I've been rolling with Mark since the bomb squad days. He's, and he's, way, he's way more than he's, he's way deserving of it. Facts, man. I mean, uh, you know, they, they actually, Golden State actually dealt you um, in a trade for Baron Davis. Um, yeah. Now I hated that trade, man. Because, <laughs> I'm you, seriously, a week before it went down, we was actually in New Orleans playing. And I walked outside to Canal Street and got some lunch. And I remember saying to myself, I would never want to play here. And then a week later, I got traded there. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I was like, no. I was, yeah, that was crazy. Man, that, that one hurt. But did they did they tell you, you know, how did they? Uh, tell me what? Did they, uh, <laughs> did, did you get uh, it in, in, a, in, a, in through, the, through the news? Or how did you? I, listen. ESPN? I knew it was, I knew it might could go down the night before because we have, we had a home game. And after I didn't play well, and when I got to my locker, it was surrounded with reporters. I was like, "Oh, what's like, this? something up! I'm like, something's going on." Word. I was like, "All right, something might go down." And then, so I didn't sleep good that whole night. Woke up the next morning, looked at my phone. It was going crazy. Right, right. And I seen that my agent had called, so I was like, "All right, let me hit him back." So I called him. And he's like, yo, you got to trade to New Orleans. I was like, <laughs> he was like, somebody's gonna, somebody from New Orleans is going to reach out to you. And then they reached out and he's like, I'll report within 48 hours. So I just packed three big bags and went to New Orleans. And I, I was so heartbroken because I was having a hell of a year. Right, right. Eight at the time, I was actually like 14 and six. So mm -hmm. I was doing good numbers. So I didn't want to leave there, man. I was playing well. I was just round. I was just about to round to form. I mean, eventually that that really set you up for that. Uh, Dre that, Barrett. Dre Barrett, what up, man? Um, that that actually set you up for for that contract that you got in Atlanta. It did. It did. But, in hindsight, I can't be totally mad because it ended up being a good situation. Right. Well, good and good and bad, right? Yeah, good and bad. Uh, good because I ended up getting a, a solid contract, but bad because they didn't come to draft, and you know, it's in my contract year, and they draft Chris Paul. So I'm like, yo, I got this dude. Yeah, that's crazy, man. I mean, not that not that he was the Chris Paul that he is now, but you right, tell right. me he was going to be special from day one. Right. 
and he was a, and he was you, you, you he drafted was in my position. He was he played my position. Position. He was a high draft pick. We was a losing team, so they were gonna play their young guys. Right, right. So I didn't know what to expect going into the season, but um, Byron Scott let me hoop, man. He he let me rock. Yo, I got one more for you, man. I know we press we press for time right now, but um, in terms of in in '06 when when you when you got that that Atlanta contract, we we're not gonna we're not gonna state the numbers because uh, you know confidentiality. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> but, but, um, people know I got my pockets. <laughs> nah, nah, we ain't gonna do that. Uh, but you never, you never got the. You played what, like forty something games? From, hey. You got hurt, and it, and it never was, it never was the same uh, for nah. you in terms of uh, your career. I did not really get to show what I was really capable of. I don't think. But let me no, ask you. A lot, a lot of, a lot of my career was injury plague, man. So I, I didn't get to show what I could really do. And then right when I finally thought I was going to be able to show what I could do in Atlanta, you know, they paid me to be a starting, starting uh, point guard and all that type of stuff. But my knee went out. Right, right. And at the time, a lot of people thought I was just, you know, faking because I got paid and not <laughs> so my concert. But that was the furthest thing from the truth. Like, I, I wanted to hoop. Right. I wanted to myself for that next contract. Right, right. But I wanted to show what I could do as a starting point guard. So that was that, that just kind of hurt, man. That I, I wasn't really able to fulfill my contract like I wanted to. But, but you know, with respects to the, the contract and respect to, you know, you with, with you with you getting hurt, was it, was it totally, like, you know what I'm saying, devastating to you? Or was it like, yo... Oh well, I got I got nah. It, it was devastating. I'm I'm a hooper. I love hooping. Um, right. And if I wasn't gonna play, that was gonna be the end of my career. Right, right. I, I, I mean, I still want to play right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love basketball. Right. So, listen, I was not happy. I mean, yeah, I got some money, but money don't make you happy. Right, right. That's this is your passion, and and that money don't that money don't help the passion. Nah, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man. I I, I really wish. That I, I didn't get hurt, so I could kind of see what I was able to do, what I was been able to do. Now, nah, hey man, I, I know I know you uh you know pressed for time right now, but I hope that maybe you know maybe sometime down the road we could jump back on. Um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? definitely we could do it again. Yeah, you know I'm saying chop it up and, and uh, have a part two. Because I have, a, you know, I have a, a bunch of questions, but I, I forgot that you, um... Nah, listen, you, let, let's, go ahead, rock out. I mean, nah, you know, it's all good. Like, I, I ain't trying to, you know, I'm just trying to make sure that I, re I respect your time and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? All right, that's love. But, um, you know what I'm saying? Thank, thank you, you know what I'm saying? We could definitely do a, do a, a, a part two, um, you know, to this, but... I'm, I'm, I'm 40, right? And, and you're, you, you're around the same age, so... Well, I gotta say, <laughs> I ain't gotta shout your, your shout your whole your whole thing out, your whole age and all that. But I gotta say that um throughout my years, and I you know what I'm saying I hoop I hooped as well, um, you know, and throughout my years, Speedy Claxton has been like like that name that 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 you hear ringing all all you know what I'm saying you got you got your, your oh, Trey Barrett's, you got your your Speedy Claxtons, you know what I'm saying from I appreciate I appreciate that. But um, salute to you and what you've been able to to accomplish. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, definitely, definitely salute and, and and hold you to you know hold you to this this legends this legends yeah. pedestal, man, and, and, and the acumen. So I appreciate it. And want to shout out to my friend that's in the building. Love you guys. My those those are all my A ones, man, from day one. They're here in the building representing my man TK. Just tapped in, but that's the fam, man. Love them. Hey man, again, I appreciate you for taking the time out to chop it up real quick. And um, yo, we're gonna get this part two going, maybe sometime next month. You know what I'm saying? A couple right, weeks, best. something like that. We, All right. I'll be busy. goody boy. All right. All right, bro. Easy. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a that was a quick quick legends talk real fast. Um, your your boy Craig Claxton. Speedy Claxton to those that um you know to those who who in the in the basketball world um but yeah he absolutely killed killed at Hofstra 
two-time two-time um player player of the year in that conference. Um, you know what I'm saying? What what conference was that? That was the America East America East player of the year, uh, nineteen ninety-eight and two thousand. Um, you know, great, great high school career, great college career. Had had a, a, a pretty good um had a pretty good, you know what I'm saying, career in terms of the pros. But um injuries definitely plagued him and um you heard it you heard it from him, you know what I'm saying, in, in terms of how he wanted to uh do things a little bit differently. But there you have it, y'all. Speedy Claxton. We're gonna we gonna revisit and uh, we're gonna we're gonna chop it up with y'all a little later. All right? Legends talk. Thursday, we got Flip Murray. Y'all know. I'll have me.